It's another beautiful day here in Mississippi and it's perfect for a little live video here in my backyard. And I want to talk a little bit about prevention today. Every once in a while I listen to this book, Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, just to give myself a refresher. And I have a lot of things going on. I have six kids. I have a couple different businesses. My wife runs her own business. I have this property here to take care of. Um, doing some woodwork stuff and I think a lot of times it can be easy to get overwhelmed it can be easy to be discouraged even or you're, you're always gonna run into some lulls so being able to stay on your feet stay consistent keep doing what you believe in uh, continue to grow right uh, because consistency or constancy uh, can also create a little stagnancy if you're not growing if you're not sprouting some new branches some new leaves some new flowers right and prevention is one of them things that I think a lot of people in general not just business owners overlook um, or downplay I guess would be a better word for it because I think we're all aware of some of the things that we ought to be doing um, I hate that word or hate that phrase ought to be doing but we don't do it and we kind of put things off we kind of uh, wait for something to blow up right we wait for something to go wrong uh, and typically it's tremendously wrong before we do anything about it and I think a lot of business owners entrepreneurs and stuff don't really think this stuff through because they're so focused or geared towards the profits towards what's right in front of you right now what do I have to do today uh, they struggle with priorities they struggle with understanding function and making sure that the things that they're doing are, are, are efficient and productive. And I think, uh, I know that that's one of the main things that I focus on here at Prefocus is just making sure that companies are able to see the bigger picture. Okay, that's something that God's blessed me with to be able to look down at an organizational structure, a process or uh, organizational structure is really the best word for it. And be able to see, hey, where are all the moving pieces? Uh, where are the leaky buckets? Um, where are the opportunities? And um, what are we doing really well, right? How do we how do we piggyback off certain things? How do we expand certain things? How do we grow certain elements and then diminish others that are that are hurting our business? And at the end of the day, it comes down to your customers, right? It comes down to your culture. Those those types of people are going to be the best to give you feedback. You don't have to always listen to them. That's the that's that's the benefit and the good thing about running your own business. But you got to be cognizant of the things that. Um, they're thinking about or the, per the perception that they have, right? So when it comes to your business, the functionality of your specific business, I can't speak on it because I haven't spoken to you. I can't give you a perfect example that will resonate that you can digest and implement something today, but I can help you see more clear, right? Take off your blinders, take off the sunglasses, um, Look at your business with a critical eye. Hire somebody that could see it, uh, not what's wrong with it, because I think that's where a lot of business owners get insecure or offended, you know, by people like me when we come in. Um, because I don't necessarily want to point out what's wrong. I don't want to say, hey, you're messing this up, you're messing that up. There's opportunities here. That's what I want to say. Um, this is where you can be. I see you for who you are. I see your vision. I understand your vision. I know where you want to be, but you got to make some sacrifices. You got to do some things to be preventative, right? Some of the easiest ways or examples to be preventative is to look at your processes, right? This is probably the simplest way. Um, probably the most important thing is your hiring process. How are you attracting people? What are you saying? What types of people are you attracting? And What's your retention like? Um, are you bringing in the right people that that understand, believe in, and buy into your culture, your vision, your value, your definitive value? Or are you hiring based on skill? Are you hiring based on resumes? Or are you hiring based on popularity? There's a lot of people that hire family members, right? To do back office work or social media stuff. Oh, I could do this and they believe them. And, or, and maybe you wanna give them a, a chance, but it's your baby, it's your business. Be preventative. Um, processes like a CRM, for example, you could you could maybe be stuck in old ways using your cell phone or a piece of paper or an email thread or something like that. That's just that's just what you do, right? But what if you could be so much more effective? What if you could be so much more productive by adapting and changing into something new? What about your onboarding process for hiring and for new customers? 
Uh, do you have a welcoming environment? Do you have a welcoming culture? Is your aura something that makes people feel welcome? Uh, or are you trying too hard? Or are you spending too much time on things that really aren't worthwhile? Like if you want to send out every single one of your employees, you want to make sure that they're having fun and you want to make sure that they enjoy everybody and get along that you're forgetting about the, the standards of your business, that you're paying them to do what you need them to do. It's not the other way around. And I think a lot of times companies these days they try to attract and then ad adapt that person, but they're afraid to tell them what to do because it might offend them. It's just the society that we live in these days. But it's your baby, it's your business. If you're going above and beyond to make people feel good, but the pr their productivity or their environment or their um, element of cohesion or, or communication or cooperation within the work environment is really bad you're wasting money you're just wasting money try to uh, trying to appease or or buy people to stay when things get bad why, why don't why don't we try to be preventative to avoid some of those things talk to your employees some of the easiest things that you could do talk to past employees call them up they might be mad still if there's something that that was going on there they're going to be more apt to tell you find out the truth right CRM is another thing, onboarding customers. If you don't have their information right, you can call them, you can miss it up. I don't know how many times I've had air conditioning issues, right, where the, where the people write something down wrong. It's a back office issue, human error, that stuff happens. How are you addressing it? Are you even addressing it? <laughs> if somebody makes a mistake and they're upset with uh, one of your employees, are, are you just kind of letting it go and saying, hey, chopping it up, I, did my employee is more important than my customer, why? That's a mouthpiece that can go and echo things throughout the marketplace that can diminish the value and quality of your brand essence, right? It's not always about what people are buying and getting. It's about the essence of what they pay for. And there's so many different functions, functionalities, I guess, elements of your business that a lot of times, like I said, we overlook um, or we choose. I, don't, I forget the word I was using, but... We, we, over, we choose to overlook them, we avoid them, because we don't want to change. Guys, this is something that is applicable in any area of life. It could be family, it could be marriage, it could be uh, coaching, it could be a team that you're on. If there's not an element of prevention within that group of people or that relationship, foxholes are gonna keep coming up and you're gonna keep stepping in them and tripping each other up and you're not gonna be able to recover as well, and it's, it's gonna damage things. Um, you know, sometimes it may not always damage you specifically as a business or your operation, but it could damage your customers, it could damage past employees, it could damage relationships, partnership opportunities, all kinds of things. Um, and when it comes to branding, just kind of bring it home here so I don't ramble too long. Uh, there's a lot of things that you could do to create a more clear and precise message um, that resonates with your ideal target audience instead of spewing out a wide net approach of trying to garner attention or feedback or quick sales or, or you're focused on money. It's the, it's the, the golden egg and the goose uh, mentality, right? That you wanna kill the goose to get the eggs out. You want that instant gratification, you want the instant return, you need money now, but you're forgetting about the long game. And that's really the basis, the foundation of what pre-focus is. It's, it's all a long game. If you're starting a business and you don't really believe in it, or you don't really love it, how can you even see that long term? Is, is it a stepping stone to something else? Do you have a plan? Um, what happens when you fail? Uh, are you able to get back on the horse? Are you able to recover? Or, or are you gonna go back to being an employee? You know, these things are super important. I think a lot of people that start a business they don't see the long game, they just see the short term. And it really, it can mess up your whole life. It can mess up your relationships and the, and the, and the things that you're trying to do because you think about it, you put everything into a business, you launch it, you have some holes in different places, leaky buckets. And it's slowly draining out, slowly draining out. You keep plugging them, you keep plugging them, but the problems keep happening. Eventually you fail and you fail hard. And I think the inability to be vulnerable or have any type of accountability, self-accountability for that, um, or, or a consultant to, to hold you accountable or to point you in the right direction or help you see those opportunities, that could devastate your life. Um, I've, I've seen it, I, I've, I've experienced some things myself, and 
a lot of it's just stubbornness and pride with not wanting to change who you are. You want to love who you are. It's just this self-love uh, mentality that's, that's kind of rolling around this society, and it doesn't make sense to me. Um, we don't want to make excuses for things. We don't want to justify things. We don't want to keep talking in circles and circles and circles. If there's an opportunity there, grab a hold of it. Make the changes. Put the work in on the front end so on the back end you can relax a little bit and you can enjoy the success and avoid some of the setbacks and you know uh, potholes of the road of your journey. You know, um, and let's just end it right there. Be purposeful with everything you do, guys, and always remember to pre-focus. And if you ever want to just hash something out, give me a call. I'm not one of those greedy sleaze balls that wants your money. I want you to be content, happy, successful, and influential. Have a great day.